हाय फ्रेंड्स सो माई सेल्फ इस सी अश्विनी रस्तोगी फ्रॉम विविध वैल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल एल एल पी वी आर एक्सपर्ट इन वैल्यूशन सो वट इज इम्पेयरमेंट टेस्टिंग एवरी ईयर वाइल प्रिपेयरिंग योर फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट यू हैव टू डू इम्पेयरमेंट टेस्टिंग सो इन द एज फार एज कंसर्न इम्पेयरमेंट टेस्टिंग यू हैव टू बुक लॉसेज इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ इम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ असेट माइट बी पॉसिबल इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सब्सिडरी और इन एसोसिएट एज पर द इक्विटी मैथड यू हैव टू टेस्ट चेक वेदर देयर इज इम्पेयरमेंट रिक्वायर्ड और इफ यू हैव अ सम बिजनेस कम्बिनेशन यू एक्वाड असेट ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर कंपनी यू पेड हायर वैल्यू ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन एज पर द प्राइस परचेज प्राइस एलोकेशन यू पेड सम पार्ट ऑफ गुडविल एवरी ईयर और फ्रिक्वेंटली annually you have to test check whether impairment is required in respect of goodwill or might be possible you are carrying some uh, intangible asset so as per india's 38 you have to also test check impairment of asset some investment in uh, financial asset in respect of trade receivable is also required to be tested as per india's 109 for impairment in respect of expected credit loss same thing it is provision for doubtful debt in respect of trade receivable the new concept is expected credit loss ecl you need to recognize in the pnl account uh, through the fb uh, pl account or uh, in respect of trade receivable this part is 2% you considered as ecl every year so in overall scenario every year you have to check whether impairment testing is required you have invested in subsidiary or associate but the subsidiary is not doing well so you need to check the valuation of the subsidiary and how much you invested in that subsidiary so parent company is required to book the losses for impairment uh, so in this regard you have to take a valuation report from a registered valuer as per the R ibpi so guys we will discuss in detail what is impairment and when the impairment is recognized in the pnl account and you carry your asset what is impairment what when it is considered as lower than the uh, carrying value in respect of recoverable value we will discuss right now so friends discuss what is impairment testing how we can help you for impairment we are vivid valuation professional llp we are ibbi registered valuer in all three asset so we can help you for impairment testing for any kind of valuation we are authorized by the ibbi so impairment testing what is impairment testing nearly all asset current and non current are subject to impairment test to ensure that they are not overstated on the balance sheet the basic principle of the impairment is that an asset may not carried on the balance sheet above its recoverable amount recoverable amount is defined as a higher value of fair value less cost of disposal and its value in use fair value less cost of disposal is the price that would be received to sell upon the disposal of asset in an ordinary transaction between the market participant at the measurement date less cost of disposal and value in use basically we calculate based on the cash flow future cash flow uh, on the dcf basis we arrive what is the uh, value and what is the terminal value and we calculate using the uh, gordon mo model and we consider growth also calculating the fair value is given in in as 113 fair value measurement value in use require management to estimate the future pre tax cash flow to derive from the asset and discounted them using the pre tax market rate that are reflected on current asset at the time value of money the risk specific to the asset all asset subject to impairment guidance are tested for impairment where there is indication that asset may be impaired certain asset goodwill uh, are 
also test for impairment annually even if there is no in impairment indicator so this impairment test may be performed at any time during the annual period provided it is performed at the same time every year usually we consider on 31st march every year we perform impairment testing so when we are considering whether an asset is impaired both we consider whether there is a external indicator or some internal indicator we consider for impairment testing recoverable amount is cal calculated individual asset level however an asset solder arm generate cash flow independently of other asset most asset are tested for impairment of the asset described at cgu cgu basically it's a cash generated unit uh, suppose you are uh, carrying um, some business of hotel resort so hotel business what is the uh, cgu and uh, you are also running some restaurant or bar so what is the cgu for that particular restaurant so cgu is a smallest identical group of asset generate in flow that are largely independent from the cash flow from the other cgu the carrying value of a asset is compared to the recoverable usually if you are carrying value suppose is 100 crore but the recoverable value we calculated based on higher of value in use or less the cost of disposal is 100 uh, crore is your carrying amount and 90 crore is recoverable amount that it is case of impairment asset so you need to recognize impairment loss so the p and l account it is not always necessary to determine both an asset fair value less cost of disposal and value in use you can rely your uh cash flow future cash flow on discounted cash flow method dcf you can arrive the value in use if either of these amount exceed the carrying amount asset is not repaired and not necessary to estimate the other amount and asset or cgu is impaired when it is carrying amount is recoverable amount and any impairment is allocated to the asset or asset of cgu so it is impairment loss that is recognized in the pnl account through the pnl so in case of equity method suppose you have invested in the associate company so you are follow india's 28 equity method investment impairment is required when uh, the fair value of investment fall below its carrying value on the investor balance sheet this may happen when the decline in the value is determined to be other than temporary some case something is happen permanent diminution you need to recognize impairment loss and adjust it from the investment in associate as per the equity method the investor must test for impairment when there are indicator exist and that investment may not be recoverable such as poor financial performance or adverse market condition investor must recognize an impairment loss on the income statement reduce the value of investment on the balance sheet so in case of you invested in the subsidiary investment for investment in subsidiary refer to a recognize of uh, loss in the value of the parent entity uh, is the holding company through the investment in the subsidiary you require to recognize impairment loss in the holding company you you need to uh, compute the value no required valuation report in respect of subsidiary business subsidiary company for the purpose of impairment testing this may occur when the goodwill or premium paid for subsidy declined due to various factor the impairment is tested at least once per year by comparing the car carrying value of the investment with the recoverable amount the auditor need to obtain financial statement of the subsidy identify the impairment indicator evaluate the assumption model used by the management 
so in case impairment is required you have a business combination you acquired some asset you acquired some brand or uh, some trademark you paid the purchase consideration in excess of asset you acquired so something you paid for the um, value of goodwill so as per the purchase price allocation method you computed the goodwill part you need to test check impairment every year so impairment of goodwill in the business combination acquired when the carrying amount of a good group of asset containing the goodwill exceeds its recoverable amount the goodwill is excess of purchase price over the fair value of net identifiable asset is acquired goodwill is assigned to be reporting unit and tested for impairment at least annually or more frequently if there is a indicator impairment the impairment loss is recognized if the fair value of a reporting entity is less than the carrying amount so impairment testing in respect of cq as we discuss cash generating unit impairment is a process of comparing the recoverable amount of cq with the carrying amount including any goodwill the cq is group of asset generate independent cash flows if the recoverable amount of cq is less than the carrying amount so in my example recoverable amount is 90 but the carrying amount is 100 crore so 10 crore is the impairment loss and impairment loss must be recognized and allocated first to the reduce the value of goodwill so suppose your goodwill is showing 20 crore but the impairment loss is come around 10 crore so your now onwards goodwill is only 10 crore you need to first allocate from the impairment loss from the goodwill in case of ecl so as i discuss ecl is a provision for doubtful debt you have a financial asset in the form of trade receivable every year some percentile 2% 3% 5% you must recognize based on your uh, risk factor for the asset class you have uh, sold to the customer but you are expecting something is expected at credit loss you must recognize ecl as per the indias 109 so intangible asset suppose you have a some intangible internally generated or you have might be possible to bought from outside intangible asset impairment testing as per indias 38 intangible asset with the finite use of life are considered for impairment suppose you have a bought some software has a 10 year useful life when there is a indicator exist the asset has to be impaired suppose you bought some software showing a useful life 10 year but after 5 year consider the software is no longer is required in the company some advanced version of software is available so it's uh possible for you you might recognize impairment loss for that particular intangible asset so in, in, intangible asset with infinite useful life or intangible asset not at use or tested annually so you so this software is usable but now no more is required so you can recognize impairment loss in the p and l account so guys this side from our side for impairment testing how we can assist you we can compute your impairment loss and determine what is the recoverable amount might be possible some other part of in, uh, expert we need to engage for plant and machinery or some the land and building we are vivid valuation professional in all the various set we can compute we have a expert team thank you guys you uh, most probably this ppt is uh, required for you we will share in the link description below thank you